Right, so this video is going to cover uh, the transition metal chromium uh, and it's going to look at all the various bits about sort of the complexes and the colours um, that the transition metal chromium uh, kind of undergoes and some of the reactions that it, that it looks at and it's all from the unit 5 part kind of spans across sort of the inorganic stuff um, bit of substitution sort of inorganic solutions um, and all that and all that sort of stuff so oh, Java update always important <laughs> gonna start with um, a kind of an assumption really that sort of you understand what chrome is that you can do sort of a uh, sort of basic chemistry bits I'm not going to worry too much about that so electron configuration we'll go straight into it uh, and hit with uh, dichromate and the chromate ions and I think that's quite a sort of useful useful place to start really so we've got our um, and you've come across certainly the dichromate ion um, loads of times so this is the dichromate ion CR2 O7 2 minus and there's also a chromate ion which is similar because it's got chromium and oxygen which gives it its chromate the oxygen giving it the 8 there with the 2 minus again I always find this uh, probably needlessly difficult to remember particularly the charge I always think that it might be CR, CR04 minus but it's not it's 2 minus you've got to remember that uh, one quite nice way quite easy way to remember this is they have the same oxidation state so in both of these formats the chromium oxidation state is plus 6 so we have plus 6 here, minus 14, uh, 2 minus, plus 6, minus 8, 2 minus. They're both the same in relation to their oxidation states. Um, so this one is the dichromate. Um, because of that 6, you would often see it written as dichromate 6. And this guy, again, with the 6, chromate 6. Uh, in terms of colours, this one orange states are very very important so if something's precipitate say it's precipitate if it's not then say it's a solution or whatever it is don't go with liquid go solutions or precipitates this guy is a yellow solution um, you can quite easily make these in the lab certainly you have probably will have come across this as an oxidizing agent very common oxidizing agent uh, very good at its job Acid acidified potassium dichromate particularly um, very very bright orange this one though uh, incredibly, it's almost like fluorescent yellow. It's uh, it's it's intense the colour. Um, very easy to make. And one way you can do that is if um, is knowing sort of these these guys exist in a uh, sort of in an equilibrium that kind of reversible reaction that sort of goes between the two. And that looks something like two Cr. Oh, it's not the greatest R. Uh, two minus. Uh, so I'm not going to put state symbols in. That's aqueous. Uh, H plus equilibrium CR two O seven two minus and H two O. So if you start with the dichromate, uh, what you can do is you can add some alkali, uh, and that will force this that way. Okay, so if you add alkali, you will shift the position of equilibrium to the left. I will say add OH minus, and on the contrary, reverse there. Add H plus, shift to the right. The reason being, if I add OH minus, it's going to react with this to form water, uh, and as a result, the position of equilibrium is going to shift to the left to oppose the removal of the H plus, as it would be, or the addition of the OH minus, to create more H plus. And bam, in process, it's going to shift this guy into this one. So the dichromate is going to become the chromate ion. Adding H plus does the opposite. Having excess of this, then equilibrium shifts to the right to oppose the increase in H plus. The chromate, then the yellow colour, is going to become the orange that we all know and love, which is the dichromate Cr two O seven two minus. That's a, a reasonably, sort of, I think, a reasonably easy start. Loads of equations in this, loads of formulae to sort of to deal with. So, kind of, you know, it's just just got to go with it. I've tried to think of what I think is the best sort of order, the most logical kind of order. Um, that there is, but uh, I'm sure that you know it, it could be improved on, but which I might do at a later date if I if I feel the need to. Anyway, um, so we're going to start off with uh, looking at the dichromate ion, this guy here, and uh, look at what happens when we add zinc. Let me change colour for this. Oof. I could have done it in orange, all the colours, but nowhere near organised enough. Uh, yeah, I'll do. So uh, we're going to look at the dichromate with zinc. Uh, note that I'm on a, not on about an excess of zinc, so 
some zinc. It's quite key there. And what we're going to get is uh, a reaction occurring. Uh, we're going to find that the dichromate, this guy, is going to react with zinc and is as a process and it's I'm going to write out the full what is it the redox equation I'm going to write out in full and then I'll sort of break it down in a second as to sort of where you can get to that but I'm assuming at this point that you know you've got a reasonable sort of grasp on um on actually how how redox works otherwise you've seriously got to go back and uh work on that 2CR3 plus so the 3ZN2 minus 2CR3 plus and 7 H two O. So we've got two reactions occurring here, two half equations. One is the zinc uh, being oxidised, oxidised across there, and here we've got the dichromate being reduced to the chromium three plus ion. So the chromium is the thing being reduced, and it's going from plus six all the way to plus three. The zinc on the other hand, plus two here, zinc zero here. So zero to plus two, oxidized, plus six to plus three, reduced. Two half equations, you can piece them together to make this, it's not overly difficult. I've just uh, sort of whacked it down there because it's a little bit easier to do so. In terms of color changes, what have we got? Well, and I'm gonna be a little bit fancy, I'm gonna stick the colors in. I've not made a great start actually, have I, with the colors there? I'll go with it. Um, this is an orange solution, as I've already said previously. So our dichromate Cr2O17 minus, and in this reaction, what we form is over here the Cr3 plus, which actually in reality is this guy, but it just makes writing everything out a little bit more difficult if you do that. So. It's this thing here. It's the it's the hydrated hexa aqua um, complex, and that is a green solution. So we've gone from orange solution to a green solution, and this is actually what we see when we oxidise something. Because when this is acting as an oxidising agent, the uh, the dichromate ion, it gets itself reduced to the chromium three plus, and that's our orange to green colour change. So when we're oxidising primary and secondary alcohols uh, or aldehydes, that's the colour change we're looking for, right there, orange to green solution. Now that's with some zinc, I said. Now if I whack it up and I go and I change colour, because that's always important. I'm not choosing my colour, there we go. If I were to add excess zinc, I would find that my hydrated compound there, my CR, where are we? CR, blah, 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 blah. H2O6. Three plus. Uh, it's going to react with the zinc. Of an easier reaction to deal with now, uh, actually, uh, and what we get here is this. I should balance it as I go. It's probably easier. Is going to react and is going to be um, reduced. So my chromium has been reduced again, uh, uh, whilst the zinc is being oxidized. So same thing as before. Zinc is being oxidized. And this is with excess zinc. Zinc is being oxidized. My chromium the way down here is being reduced. This time from plus three down to plus two. You could simplify this, um, I'll just stick it on the top here, it still works in the same way, uh, CR3 plus to CR2 plus, still all hunky door if you do that, uh, and there's a couple of questions actually which I'll look at the end, one I think which actually asks you to do is a simplified form, probably to make it a bit easier. Uh, in terms of colour changes, so we've got the same compound as before, so we're starting with that same green here, green solution. But now what we're doing is we are forming a lovely blue solution. 
in the Chromium 2 Plus, okay, in the Chromium 2 Plus. It's also worth noting at this point that this Chromium 2 Plus, in order to form it and to keep it there, you need to keep it away from oxygen. If oxygen gets into the reaction, it will rapidly uh, reoxidize this back to the 3 Plus. So you'd have to do it in an inert atmosphere, basically somewhere where you can keep oxygen away from it. So, what we've got so far then, we've got our dichromate. Uh, and our chromate ions and how they sort of interact with each other with dichromate being reduced using zinc to the chromium 3 plus ion obviously in the process of the zinc being oxidized and then with an excess this chromium 3 plus being further reduced to the chromium 2 plus and the color change that associate orange to green to green to blue which is obviously very useful um, where are we going to go now right so yeah I'll stick with the order that I've that I've sort of uh, that I've planned with. The order is, um, and um, I was a bit sort of woman and iron of how to do this next bit because it kind of crosses over, and no matter how you do it, you're always going to sort of have to go back on yourself. But I'll stick with how I've planned it anyway. It's, it's probably probably for the best. Um, the next part is basically taking this CR oxidizing, basically the CR. H two O six three plus ions. So we look at oxidizing that. And the way we can do that uh, is we can use OH minus excess and H two O two hydrogen peroxide. It's a two step process, and I've spent quite a bit of time sort of trying to come up with the best sort of way of doing this and I think really it's just to look at it as a two step process I and mean, we look at the certainly some of the stuff later on um, some of the exam questions I'm going to show you uh, I think the two step process certainly um, works much better And but I'm going to come back to this first but which is the addition of the excess OH minus and so the first step of this is basically our chromium little cheeky chromium there CrH2O6 the 3 plus the hydrated the hexa aqua complex that we've got we add excess OH minus uh, and what we're going to find is that the ligand substitution goes on here, and we basically substitute away um, the OH minus for the H2O. Or do I mean it the way around? No. Basically, we replace the H2Os with OH minuses. So we end up with this, like so. Now, key thing is here, although it was 3 plus to start with, it's now 3 minus. The easiest way to think of that is the hydroxide ions, each one bringing minus 1 to the equation. The chromium is still 3 plus at the centre of that complex, but because each hydroxide here uh, is, a, is a minus 1, the overall charge now on this complex is 3 minus. And of course, what we're doing then is we've added 6 of these, which means we have to have 6 H2Os at the end. This first step, this is with the OH minus, okay, that is just the addition of the OH minus to form as this um, fully hexa, hexa hydroxy, I think you'd, you'd probably call it hexa, something like that, um, complex here, the 3 minus. Then we've got the H2O2, which needs to be added. How much room have I got here? Oh, so much. <laughs> so, what happens in this step, and I'm trying to think of how I want to do this. It's a, it's a reasonably difficult half equation. One of the half equations is a reasonably difficult one to write. Um, the reason it's, it's, it's a bit more tricky than usual is that where we've got this, because we've got alkali conditions, it makes the half equation a little bit more tricky to sort of write. Uh, and I'll go for it anyway. So the first thing, we're adding um, the hydrogen peroxide. Now the hydrogen peroxide is going to look something like this. The hydrogen peroxide is going to go H2O2 through to OH minus two OH minus two electrons there. So this has been reduced over here. What we're doing is we're oxidizing um, ultimately we're going to be oxidizing this guy here uh, through to the chromate ion. And so we've got that there. So we've got the CR so that's one half equation. CrOH six three minus and then I'll leave a good old gap. Uh, and then we'll have a CrO4 2 minus there. Now ordinarily you'd balance using water and hydrogen ions but that's where it comes a bit tricky because it's hydroxide ions it makes it 
a little bit more confusing because hydrogen ions don't really work if we're dealing with if dealing with alkali solutions because that in, that implies really using acid. So the, but the way to get around this, and I took this directly from ChemGuide. I'm not going to pretend that I made this up myself, but it's a really really nice bit. And if you go onto ChemGuide uh, and you go onto the Chromium Chemistry page, you can get through to the explanation for this, and I think it just makes a load of sense. Um, work in the normal way that you would balance the half equation. So here we've got six uh, oxygens there, we've only got four on this side, so we're going to add two H2O's on this side to balance our oxygens. That now gives me hydrogens to balance, so I've now got four hydrogens there, I've got six there, so I've got to add some hydrogens on this side. Uh, in terms of electrons, what have I got to add? Well, I need to add uh, electrons here, three, in order to balance my charges. Now at this point, it's it's these hydrogen ions that are a bit sort of pesky and I'm not a massive fan of because it is alkali conditions. So the way to do that is add enough alkali, therefore, on both sides to remove those. So on this side, we would add two OH minus, and we've got to add to both sides, so we add two OH minus. Now, in order to kind of make this all look a little bit better, uh, we're going to remove these guys because they're going to react with each other and this is going to become 4 because of the reaction between the H plus and the OH minus. Oh now I can't find my colour again. Oh. Yes, yeah, right. So, usual way of balancing equations, uh, we're going to multiply that by 3, we're going to put on this one by 2 in order to balance those electrons and ultimately what we get when we do tidy everything up and we get it to where we want it to be uh, we are going to end up with a lovely equation that looks something like, and I'll change colour slightly for that it's going to look like C R O H 6 3 minus 3 H 2 O 2 2 CR2 minus, I need to do 2 here as well, sloppy. Uh, add 2 OH minus, because you have to, have to balance up the uh, hydroxide ions on each side. 2 OH minus 8 H2O. So that's probably the most difficult part about this whole video, I reckon, is actually this step here, and it's it's not that part, that kind of makes sense, this part here, the fact that we're going to produce the hydroxide ions, we're dealing with alkaline solution and all the rest, that's fine. It's this bit here and how to balance up using the hydroxide ions, but actually I think if you follow this method, you should be in a really nice stable position uh, of how to do that in the future. So that was my before and this is my final equation there, which hopefully makes some sense. As I said, check out the Chem Guide page, uh, it's in the inorganic section under the Chromium Chemistry and you can get to it's under the reaction of, I think, sodium hydroxide and hydrogen peroxide. There's an extra page you can go to. Have a look at it if this doesn't make sense to you and see, see how you get on. But it does, it does make some sense, I promise you. So, what we've got now is, uh, so looking at the colours, again, of all this. Um, where are we? So this guy here, and I'm going to come back to this in a second, is a green solution. Um, down here... This, we're back to our chromate ion, so that's a yellow solution. And what we could do is we could go from this, by adding H+, we would go to the Cr2 dichromate ion, the Cr2072- ion again. So it takes us right back to where we were at the beginning with the chromate ion, dichromate, sorry, and we can kind of keep going round again, which is all a bit sort of quirky and all that. But that's how that's working. I'm now going to look at the reaction of the chromium ion, the 3 plus the hex aqua ion with hydroxide and ammonia and then uh, with sodium carbonate at the very end. A bit easier now the, the kind of sections and then finish up with some exam questions which hopefully should bring it all to a nice nice end. So let's start oh purple lilac bold uh, so we're going to start with both actually, and this is this is what's quite. We'll do this with at once. So it's with NH. That's a lovely colour, uh, and with hydroxide. Note this is not excess, but in both cases I'm looking at uh, reacting my ion 
my hex aqua. Oh, that's annoying. Do OH minus at the top, do NH3 at the bottom. Reaction takes place. What's really nice is we form the same thing, and that is CrH2O3. OH3 CrH2O3 OH3 uh, we do have to stick in some other bits there uh, we've got three H2O's this is a nice ligand substitution on here it isn't on this bottom hat, bottom part though we need to balance that up as well Ooh, sneaky NH4 plus here our ammonia is acting as a base and it's actually taking the hydrogens off here <coughs> excuse me to form as the ammonium ion. Uh, but we form the same stuff, CrH2O3, OH3. Notice that there's no charge here again because the chromium's 3 plus balances with the 3 minus 1s, giving us a 0 overall. But the difference comes, a bit darker there, that's a bit of a weird colour, making it my eyes hurt actually. When we add excess OH minus, we get a different reaction occurring. So we'll start with where we were, CrH2O. Six, three plus. But now we're going to add complete excess. And what that does is it completely substitutes in the OH minus, and we end up with, as we've already touched on, this is why I didn't know how to do this first, or the other bit. But I think I'm reasonably happy with what I did. So the CrOH six three minus again, sneaky little one there, and six H2O direct substitution. Oh, forgot that. You might say, forgot what? But the colours. These, as they're both the same thing. Here, our first precipitate, we have a green precipitate going on there. So that's these guys, green precipitate, because it's obviously the same compound. This one uh, is a green solution, as we've already come across. Um, I'll change up colour, so it's just a bit easier to. If I use excess NH3, what's quite useful is it's a very similar reaction, very similar concept. The CrH2O6, rather than the ammonia acting as a base, we now get a nice bit of substitution going on. Uh, we end up with CrNH3-6. 3 plus still though because this does, has no overall charge there uh, and of course 6 H2O still colour here and I'll see if I can stick with it violet solution delightful so that's basically the reaction of the ammonia and the OH minus again in sort of not in excess and then in excess giving us those various bits and the final bit I'm going to look at, I'm going to do this in red orange probably is the reaction again of that same, this is with Na2CO3 same CrH2O6 3 plus this time with carbonate. The thing to mention here is that actually in this case here, in this reaction, um, the, the, the chromium complex uh, shows some uh, an acidic nature and the reason is that within the complex, you think about the we've got our chromium ion there and we'll just say we've got our H2O like that, what happens is due to the charge here, electrons are actually pulled closer to it, and the same occurs here and within the OH. No, it's actually a fairly poor example. Um, I'll do it properly again. The electrons are pulled kind of closer, everything's drawn this way uh, and, and what we end up with is basically these hydrogen ions become more positive as a result so they become, uh, sort of, I guess we could say strongly or significantly sort of delta, delta positive which ultimately means 
uh, they're more positive, as I said, but that they're actually more easily lost, and therefore it's it acts more as an acid than, uh, say, a lower charge would do. And you'll see that more in uh, some of the other transition metal complexes that have, say, the 2 plus charge. So also the same same thing applies to Fe3 plus, works in a similar way. And because it acts like an acid, uh, we get that usual kind of reaction that we would that we would see. So in this case, we're forming what we've already seen actually h two o three o h three no charge that's a three uh but then because it's acting as an acid we get our three c o two and h two o um so that's that's basically what we've got going on there, which is generally obviously the sort of reaction you might expect when you add an, an acid to a carbonate the fizzing of the carbonate and the and the water as well this being a green precipitate uh, as already covered so that's a lot of the theory of the chromium stuff done I'm gonna whack in uh, a couple of exam questions now to sort of break that all down uh, and see where we go from there Right, so we've got a couple of uh, questions to show you from uh, just the two papers. Uh, chromium stuff doesn't come up every year. Uh, you're guaranteed almost to get some transition stuff come up on colours and all the rest of it in equations. But uh, here's two years. This is uh, Jan 11, the first one, and then we're going to go on to June 12. So this is the Jan 11 paper. Um, and quite nice questions here. So the first one, consider the following reaction screen, uh, scheme. All the complexes are in aqueous solutions. So we've got this first bit here, which is our... Uh, uh, our blah, 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 the chromium complex uh, adding excess NaOH so think about what's already been covered in the video and we're forming this unknown chromium 3 complex so we've got to write an equation of this reaction which means you obviously need to include this chromium 3 complex there so we also need some colours but I'd start with the equation I'd go Cr H2O 6 3 plus we know add in OH minus, and I already know it's excess, so I'm going to be completely substituting all those ligands off. Oh, I don't like that at all. Bad arrow. Oh, it's a dream. Um, and what we're going to form then is the in between is going to be this guy CrOH6, 3 minus, remember, and the 6 H2Os uh, as, as a result. So we've completely substituted across there. Colours are required, uh, so our colours are, uh, this guy here is a green solution, uh, and this one I believe is also a green solution, isn't it? Which is a bit, a bit boring really. Oh. oh, there you go. It is worth noting, actually, and I didn't mention this earlier on in the video, the the amount of colours you can have for this are, are astonishing. It's something like you can have, like, violet, ruby, green. There's all sorts of different ones. I think green is just the one to stick with. I don't know where they get half the other ones from. So green solution, green solution, four marks. Four marks? That is absurd. They throw in marks at you. Chem 5 is actually a good paper to score loads of marks on because the grade boundaries are normally quite low, I guess because there's so much sort of learning in, in many ways. Anyway, uh, 7b part 2, write a half equation for the reduction of hydrogen peroxide to hydroxide ions. So actually what I said in the, this is what I did in the video earlier on. So we'll start with that. So H2O2, boom, OH minus, stick a 2 there, stick in my two electrons, Bob's your uncle, reduction is occurring. I just said you had to sort of assume that and work it out. They're actually telling you that. That's your first bit. And what we've got here is this that difficult equation that I said about. So we've got that uh, oxidation of the chromium-3 complex to what is ultimately going to be chromium-6 here in the chromate. So we know our chromium-3 complex. And we'll do another half equation here. So we know that the chromium complex we're dealing with is the CrOH6-3-. Uh, and we know that it's becoming CR, what is that? CROH, that's not right either. Crying out loud. CRO42 minus finally. Uh, and put that arrow about there, bit of a weird place. This is one of those ones I said before. Treat it as if you're just doing an ordinary balancing equation. Okay, we'll ignore the fact that it's in alkali solution. 
ordinary equations. So we sort our oxygens first. Our chromiums first of all are balanced. Two, one and one. Sorry, not two, one and one. Uh, oxygens need balance. Since we did that by adding some water, so we had two waters in here. We should have added it there. I'll add the next one here. Uh, our hydrogen now need balance, and I've got four here. I've got six here, so I need another two hydrogens there. Uh, and finally, I have to add some electrons because I've got three minus there. I've got two plus two minus. I've got obviously zero overall. I've got to get three minus my three electrons. <coughs> now, next thing is to basically undo my acid and add alkali in there instead. So I'm going to add in two lots of alkali in order to undo this change there. Add it to both sides, 2OH minus. Um, ultimately, that's going to cause uh, the... When I actually add it in, that would help. The H plus and the OH minus are going to react together to form water. So 2H plus 2OH... 2H plus 2OH minus going to form 2, which adds on to the current 2 and gives me 4 there. Once I double this one, treble this one, dearie me, what is happening? And double that one, I'm going to get my final equation, which was as it was before. Um, it was that uh, CR OH6 3 minus add 6. OH. What am I doing? That doesn't make any sense. 3H2O2 2CrO4 2 minus. Uh, I balance, I'm just going into count if I balance everything else up. 2OH minus uh, and 8H2O. And again, four more marks there. I mean, that's a lovely number of marks. You're not going to get much better than that. I'm going to ignore that next question because there's no, no need to do that one. A bit more about redox titration stuff, I think. So, the next one is this one. And I like this one because it ties into electrode potentials and it links that in to the um, transition stuff as well. It's quite a nice, clever question. I think it came up many... I'm going to zoom out a little bit so I've got a bit more space so I can see stuff. I think it... Actually, no, I don't need to do that. I can see it all anyway. It came up a little while ago, I think. Many years ago, actually, in pre... Um, current specification, but it's a really good question. I really, really like it. Uh, so we've got loads of electro potentials here. Um, what colour change will be observed when an excess of zinc is added to an acidified solution of potassium dichromate in the absence of air? So each reaction. So what we're going to do is, it's one of these kind of annoying ones really don't just go in for the excess. It's going to happen in two stages. So we've got it initially happening where we've got the adding the zinc and just a reaction occurring, and then there's the excess going to happen as well uh, when the, the next stage of that reaction occurs. And it's it's good in that we've got this sort of data here as well. The reason that's good is because we know that zinc is going to be, it's going to undergo the opposite reaction of this. It's going to go Z, zinc to Zn2+, plus, just like that. It's going to be oxidized, which means it's obviously going to have a value of plus 0.76 if we're dealing with the oxidation. Um, and we are looking at, so we've got potassium dichromate is our initial one, so we've got this occurring here, uh, our first one, and that makes sense, if you look at it, we would expect oxidation to occur at the more negative, or the less positive uh, of the two uh, electrodes, or the more negative electrode uh, potential, and it does, 0 0.76 versus 1.33. So this is more positive, and this is where the reduction is taking place, as we would imagine, plus 6 to plus 3. So this is fitting what we want it to do already. So our first equation is going to be this first one, where we've got the Cr, uh, O7, Cr2072 minus... We'll keep that on here. 14H plus 6 electrons go into the 2, Cr3 plus... At 7H2O. Obviously, we're going to have to incorporate into that the zinc, becoming zinc 2 plus and 2 electrons, which we've obviously got to multiply by 3, so we've got the right numbers here. Balancing that all up as we would want, we're going to end up with Cr2O7 2 minus, add 14H plus, add 3 zinc, 3 Zn2 plus, add 
2 Cr 3 plus add 7 H2O. That's our first portion of that. Colours, what's going on each colour change. So we're starting orange here. Orange solution, the right there, and we're going to go here to a green solution. Remember, it's the ordinary sort of oxidation, or using the dichromate as an oxide zone. It's been reduced from the 2 minus to the 3 plus, but obviously from the plus 6 to the uh, plus 3. I panicked there for a second. Uh, next equation, what's going to happen? Well, I think it's better to start with this, which I promise you actually is a 3 plus there. It just looks awful. So I would start with the 3 plus. I'm going to get rid of that thing for now. Uh, again, we're reacting with zinc, excess of zinc. Zinc is going to do its usual trick, Zn2 plus. Uh, and we're going to go to Cr2 plus. Now I've realized that was a bad idea because I've not done the half equation step of that, uh, which was a really, really bad idea. Um, so zinc to zinc 2 plus, try and work this out now. So that's two electrons, one electron. So I think we're going to have two and two. Color changes here then. So we're starting with our green solution. And we're going to go down to a blue solution. That's the color change they were looking for. Uh, and that there is going to get you five marks. Unbelievable. Uh, but actually, I think a really nice question. Quite a lot of thought involved into it. But actually, when you think about it, once you know your stuff and your colors, that is, this actually is a gift, particularly if you don't, if you're good with your electrode half equations, it actually helps you even more. Uh, so really, really nice there. Seven uh, B, gonna oh, for another four marks, brilliant. So describe what you observe when dilute aqueous sodium hydroxide is added dropwise until an excess to a dilute aqueous solution containing chromium three plus ions. Let's go straight into it. Uh, so we're looking for this. Look at this now. Give the full formula. So not dealing with the small ones which you were before of the Cr three plus Cr two plus. Looking for full formula. So Cr H two O six three plus, and we're going to add some of that OH minus to that. And remember, it happens in the two stages. The first one was the Cr H two O three OH three plus three H two O. That was our first step. Uh, and obviously, balance that up. Now the next step is a little bit different to what I had in the video earlier on, and they will accept marks for actually this being fully um, hydroxidified. But actually, because it's if you read the question, it's what would you observe when the dilute the aqueous sodium hydroxide is added, dropwise until an excess. So actually, this is then what would be reacted further, and it kind of makes sense. Uh, and I think you could probably do this on the fly. So we start with that. We add another OH minus another three lots, and we end up ultimately with this. CR OH6 3 minus compound being formed there. Uh, in terms of colour changes, um, here we've got green precipitate. Uh, we want do they want colours? Oh. oh yeah, what would you observe? So it's observed, what would you see? So we would start here with green solution, go into a green precipitate, uh, and then the green precipitate here would become a green solution again. And there you have it. Uh, two, two lots of questions there, or four questions in total I think it is, um, from a couple of papers. I uh, hope that's been of some help. Loads of stuff on chromium there. Um, let me know if there's any problems. Uh, but there you go. That's uh, chromium chemistry.